Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. Welcome to Thursday Night Football with Calvin Dean, sponsored by the NFL Network. Wow. Do we have a show for you tonight or what? What about my five for five? Yeah, I'm talking about my locks of the week. I have gone out for five for five. And these locks aren't like the easy game picks, you know? It's not like uh, New England over Miami or something like that. Last week's lock, the lock of the week. What does that mean, lock of the week? What that means is this. You should go out and empty your bank accounts and bet on my lock of the week. It's it's a for sure thing, guys. I mean, I bet, I said, the Buffalo Bills will beat the Kansas City Chiefs at home last week. I said that was my lock. Take the points, run with it, go with Buffalo. And what happened, people? I won. You know, and a lot of people want a lot of money, which is really, really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. I really do. We do have a week six upon us, man. I mean, six. Wow. Can you believe it's week six already? We're a third into the NFL season because the season 17 games this year, right? And, uh, you know, I mean... Well, a little bit over a third, right? Anyway, uh, we have week six upon us, and it's it's an interesting week. It's an interesting week. Uh, you know, the first game is going to be Mr. Goat. Yes, Tom Brady goes into the Philadelphia Eagles. His Tampa Bay Buccaneers looking all world last week with 411 yards and five touchdowns. The guy is leading in touchdowns, leading in everything. He's 44 years old. Tom Brady, 44 years old. <laughs> I have a, my friend Stu thinks he's uh, made a deal with the devil. That's what Stu said the other day. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I don't know. I I don't know if it's the devil, uh, but I know it's something. I mean, the guy is just uh, 44 years old, and he looks better than he was in his 20s. Amazing. I mean, the guy is in great shape. He has a phenomenal team behind him. And uh, Tampa Bay's record, Tom Barry, let's just say Tom Brady's record, not Tampa Bay's, but Tom Brady is 8-1 and one on network on the NFL Network since night uh, excuse me since 2012 yes Tom Brady's record in the last 9 times he's played on the NFL Network primetime game is 8 and 1 and that's since uh 2012 so wow man that's is um something to uh, definitely look at uh let's just look at tonight's game first I have to be fair. Let's look at everything. Uh, and uh, is n- games aren't easy. They aren't. And uh, let's just look at the differences between the Tampa Bay Bucks and the Philadelphia uh, Eagles. Uh, why don't we look at the offense rankings? I like to do rankings because rankings really do matter. They really do. Right now they do because... Some of these teams have played some great teams, and some of them haven't played some great teams, you know? So, but the Tampa Bay Bucks, I mean, they've been playing nothing but lights out. And um, against great teams, uh, they've been really good. I mean, their record stands for itself, doesn't it? I mean, come on, man. Really, right now... The Tampa Bay Bucks look really, really good. I mean, of course, the Arizona Cardinals look good. Um, I'm, I'm agreeing to on everyone on that one. I think Arizona Car- Cardinals with Kyler Murray 
um, is pretty good. Uh, they're five and zero, and the Tampa Bay Bucks are four and one. The Philadelphia Eagles are two and three. Well, that's that's pretty good for Philly. I mean, they're playing a catch up to the Dallas Cowboys, and we'll get into the Dallas Cowboys later on in the show. Okay, let's talk about tonight's game. We have Thursday night football with Calvin Dean. <laughs> you love that one. I love that one. Um, we have the offensive rankings in the NFL. The offense with the Buccaneers, of course, is ranked third. I mean, who can blame you on that one? Third offense ranking in the NFL to uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. There are no schmucks. They're 14th. They're, you know, they're half in the 50 percentile of the NFL a little bit better, but still, uh, they need some work done. You know, they have a, um, a semi-rookie quarterback, right? Jalen Hurts, he's second year. Uh, it's looking pretty good. I mean, uh, we'll see. We'll see. He he he's, he does have some great games, and uh, we'll see how um, the Tampa Bay Bucks plays uh, Mr. Hurts uh, because he loves to run it. And he likes to pass it, too. likes to go but on the field. That's what I like about Jalen Hurts. He really likes to go for the home run ball. I, I kind of like that, especially when you're a running quarterback. So then we have the defense uh, is ranked 15th uh, in Tampa Bay. Now, Tampa Bay's played a little bit better teams than uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia Eagles, yeah, they did play um, You know the Dallas Cowboys. I can give them that. They're ranked 9th in the NFL. But um, I'm still I'm still going to give this one to the Tampa Bay Bucks. They did this last year. Tampa Bay did. They they came out slow, and you, you know they're hurt. Tampa Bay is hurt. The the defensive backfield is hurt, and um, you know it, it. But I truly believe in the end of, uh, of the season, Tampa Bay Bucks defense will be in the top five. Mark my word on that one. Uh, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. They're number nine. They're in top ten. That's awesome for Philadelphia. I mean, they really are. I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, me, I'm, I'm thinking it's more like the opposite near the end of the season. I think probably Tampa Bay will end up, I mean, uh, in the top five. And I think the defense of the um, Philadelphia Eagles might be in the top 15 in defenses. We'll we'll find out. Uh, the passing, well, <laughs> Tom Brady, I mean, he's got the number one passing offense in the NFL. Tom Brady, 44 years old. Whew. Gotta, I mean, come on, man. Really? 44 years old and you're the top passer in the NFL? Oh, come on, people. Really? Really? Uh, I mean, whew, man, I just, uh, I just can't, I can't, I can't, that's just, that's just too much to even handle. The, the, you know, the thought of that, you know, think about it, guys, 44 years old and he's number one. He's he's on he's on path to throw over 50 touchdowns, five zero. They're saying 51 touchdowns and over six thousand yards of passing. Oh, come on, man. Really? Six thousand yards of passing? Tom Brady, and then they wonder, wonder who's going to be in the Super Bowl. Oh, come on, man. I mean, if they continue that, I, I'm sorry, Rams, I'm sorry, Cardinals, you're not going to be in the Super Bowl. You have to go through Tampa Bay, and you're not going to beat Tampa Bay. You're just not. Not. I'm just telling you, I'm telling everyone this. Don't get too excited because Tampa Bay is right there, and um, Tom Brady's having one of those years, and the defense shores it up near the end of the Season, poof, wow, and, the, and you know they're going to start running um, Rojo and Fournette and trying to really pound it out. They might even do it tonight, pound it out, and and you know maybe a complete opposite where they'll just pound it and pound it and pound it, and uh, Philly will break. We'll see. Uh, the twelfth um, number one. Uh, well, the Philadelphia Eagles are number twelfth in the NFL. Which is uh, you know is adequate top twelve rushing. This is where uh, Tampa Bay needs to get better. They're at twenty sixth, but man, their passing is just is extreme. Four hundred and eleven yards passing last week and five touchdowns 
for uh, Tom Brady. And I mean, come on, man, really? Think about that. I mean, wh- why would you not be, you know, just passing the ball? But they have to do better and run the rush. I think that's tonight's game uh, with Tampa Bay. I think they're going to try to really establish the rush and really pound it. And I, I, I look forward to seeing that. I mean, it's in Philadelphia. It's, it's a tough place to play in Philadelphia. I mean, those, those fans are just wicked. The rushing offense of the Philadelphia Eagles is number 13th. So they're kind of average in a way. I mean, their offense is 14th. Their defense is 9, which is above average. Then their passing is 12, and their rushing is 13. So they're sort of an average team. You know, and well, in offense, they're just average. You know, they're they're not spectacular. They're just average. And I mean, if they keep the number one, uh, number nine defense in the NFL, then you know that the Philly they they they're gonna they're gonna give. I think they're gonna give Tampa Bay um, some fits tonight. I really do. Um, tonight's game, I'm predicting right now. I'm t- t- predicting predicting. Excuse me. The Tampa Bay Bucks to beat the Philadelphia Eagles, but it won't be by a landslide. Uh, I think they're going to try to grind it out against the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I think it probably ends up to be like maybe thirty-two to seventeen or thirty-two to twelve or something like that. I I. I it might be closer. It could be thirty-two to twenty-four, or something like that, and be exciting. But it, they have been exciting lately. The the Thursday night football games and the Monday night football games make really, really exciting. And I'm I'm excited just to uh, watch that team. Those two teams play. I mean, they're really, really good. Um, I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles. They're tough, and they're tough at home. So I um, mean, they're going to give. The GOAT all for, I think the first half they'll really play well, but I think in the second half the Bucks will start pulling away and um, they'll win by probably like 12, 14 points. Sorry, Philly. Uh, I just, I, you're going to keep it close first half, but in the second half it just uh, the Bucks are going to pull away. Okay, we have um, another London game. We have. The Jacksonville Jags going into uh, uh, to England, and they're playing the Dolphins uh, once again at Hotspur Stadium, uh, uh, and in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium to be exact. And uh, Jacksonville um, is the only team with three wins in London. Can you believe that? Only three teams in London. And now there's another fact about going to London is that the there hasn't been a rookie quarterback that's ever won a game in London. So that's another tidbit. So it's kind of like, oh no, what should they do? What should they do? Are they going to win? Are they going to lose? Oh, that's saying win, that's saying lose. You don't know. You got a one and four Dolphin team that is just looking terrible. I mean, they are looking terrible, aren't they? I mean, look, the GOAT just you know, destroyed them last week. And I think this is going to be the game, the first game of um, Mr. Trey Lance's um, winning uh, NFL um, career. I think he's going to have a good career. I think, you know, it's just like, hey, look at Peyton Manning when he first started. Didn't start too well, did they? Did he with the Indianapolis Colts? No, he didn't. They they had a losing season. But I think that's an uh, I think that's like a Trevor Lawrence. I think they're going to really um, put some people around him and make that team much much better. And watch out, um, Trevor Lawrence. And I say maybe another two years, you're going to see Jacksonville in the playoffs. This is uh, they're going to be their first game win. Uh, uh, the Jacksonville Jags are going to beat the Miami Dolphins in London on London early, early morning. People, I mean, if you're on the West Coast, it's around 6 a.m., 6.15 p.m. East Coast, you're around 9.15. So, uh, you know, good luck to both teams, uh, Jacksonville in this one. The next game, you have the 2-3 and three Chiefs going into the uh, Washington football team, which... 
I don't know. I mean, they're good, but they're just not. They're not as good uh, with the Chiefs. Now, the Chiefs' offense is number four in the National League. I mean, National Football League. Excuse me. And uh, you know, Washington's twenty, and they're not that good. And now this this next tidbit is about the defense. I mean, Washington's ranked twenty seventh. I mean, this is a team that they. I mean, Chase. I mean, they. They. Everyone thought, "Hey, this. This is the team. This is the defense." I mean, all our fantasy owners. Oh, I'm going to take Washington. I took Washington on a couple of my teams. I have fifty five zero fantasy football teams. Yes, I'm very sick. Anyway, um, <laughs> I um, I they're number twenty seventh. And um, that's not good. But, you know, they beat Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs defense is 31st. Now, mind you, the, their Kansas City Chiefs are playing a little bit harder teams than the Washington football team. I mean, you know, but on the other hand, uh, Kansas City is just, uh, their defense is, you know, not that good. They're second to, to the la- to last team in the league. Think about it. Wow, that's not good. You have the passing attack of the Kansas City Chiefs, which is number five. Passing on the Washington football team is 21st, seventh in rushing. Um, now, mind you, I don't know about the rushing. Hilaire is, uh, I guess he had a bad sprain of his MCL. He's going to be out for a few weeks. So we got Williams uh, handling the honors. Uh, and the rushing, um, de- you know, of um, you know, with, with the Washington Redskins, they're um, they're they they got a good team, guys. They got a really really good team. They uh, the Washington Redskins, uh, you know, they have that team that they could really give Kansas City a run for the money on this one. And I expect Washington to try to just chip away, chip away, and chip away. Uh, but I don't know if they have enough firing power. Now, this another thing is is that the Kansas City Chiefs um, offensive line, the All Star offensive line that was supposed to be All Starish, um, haven't gelled yet. So that's another story. Um, Mahomes has been, you know, he hasn't been checking down right. He's been trying to find the big play. You know, I've just noticed that last game. I've saw a lot of. Balls where he could have checked down, got eight yards, checked down, got eight yards, um, but he didn't. And, um, you know, he it ended up in the ground, overthrows. Uh, and he's, and uh, I just think that's his nemesis, is um, Patrick Mahone's nemesis is just always going for the home run, and that's his thing. And then, um, you know, just... I don't know. The the kid is really good. Don't get me wrong. I think Patrick Mahomes is a, an amazing, amazing talent. But, um, you know, lately uh, he hasn't been making two um, the best decisions. I think this game he's going to make some better decisions with the ball. Uh, I, I can see um, him... Uh, you know, lighten it up against the Washington defense, the defense of, uh, you know, it's 27th. So um, I'm going to give this one to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I was thinking about an upset on this one. I was really thinking about it. I think the um, the fo- Washington football team is going to play them really tough. And um, I think the Chiefs by like one or two, three points on this game. But they're going to pull it out at the end. The next game we have on the docket, it would be the Giants uh, against the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams four and one, the Giants one and four. Uh, man, I'm telling you, the the Giants uh, Barkley that terrible uh, ankle sprain. I've had one of those guys. It's it's it doesn't. It's not. It's not happy. You're not a happy camper, especially. I did that in practice in college. And, um, you know, I went back for a ball. My ankle just turned. And that was my season, man. It was just, it was a bad ankle sprain. You know, the puff up like that. The ankles are bad, man. Trying to come back, especially when you're running back and you make all those cuts and stuff. And you have that ankle sprain. And, and then you come back from the ankle sprain. And it's, 
it's not a it's not like an instantaneous um, thing. I mean, they'll they'll tape you up and they'll they'll shoot you up with some cortisone and they'll they'll, they'll shoot you up with some, some painkillers and I mean, you could tape it up and try to run, but you're never the same. Never the same. Uh, I don't think Barkley will be the same until maybe near the end of this season. I don't even think then. Um, that was a really bad sprain. If you're a fantasy owner, Booker is a good pick. Um, and uh, Daniel Jones, I mean, who does he have to throw to? Um, Galladay's been gone. I guess Shepard, uh, he, he might be back this weekend. I just don't see it happening with the Giants at home with the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, they have their the Los Angeles Rams have too many weapons, and the Giants are depleted in talent at this moment in time. Poor Daniel Jones. I like Daniel Jones, by the way. And uh, I'm seeing the Rams, Los Angeles Rams, in this one. Uh, you know, it won't be too much of a blowout. Maybe 17 points, maybe more. I mean, yeah, it's going to be one of those games, right? You know, um, we have the next game, which is interesting game. We have two one and four teams. We have the Houston Texans, who su- pur- surprised me last week by keeping it very, very close with the New England Patriots, who kept it very close the week before with the World Champion Tampa Bay Bucks. So you got to think. I mean, you know, the the Texans are definitely. Um, you know, there's something to think about because they've been keeping the games really, really close. And, I mean, they have the 29th offense in the in the league. And, you know, then you take the Colts, they have the 17th. I just, if you look at in paper, you, the 26th defense, the 28th offense, um, 29th offense. This is, okay, this is the Texans, ready? They're ranked 29th in offense, 26th in defense, 28th in passing, and 28th in running. I mean, that's I, I can't I can't I I'm you know I'm going to go over you know the the Colts are like middle of the road, 17th in offense, defense 18th, passing 15th, and rushing 14th. Um, I'm giving this one to the Colts. Uh, I think they did. Uh, um, they they have. Um, uh, you know some assets that can really um, play well on that team, and I just I'm giving it to the Colts. Uh, it's, this is kind of an easy pick, um, you know. This is an easy pick, uh, and um, I have the Bengals and the 0 and five Lions. 0 and five Lions. I feel so sorry for those guys. You know, they're just losing at the last second, and then just they play their hearts out, man. Cincinnati has won six straight against uh, Detroit. Cincinnati, they uh, they surprised me last week. I, I had them beating, winning last week. I really did. I had them in an upset. Uh, but at this, they're going to take down the Lions. They are going to take down the Lions in this game. They'll be 4-2. Uh, Cincinnati looks really good. Lions 0-5 uh, and will be 0-6 at the end of this game. Sorry, Detroit. Cincinnati's won six straight. They're going to make it seven straight against the Lions. I think the Lions will keep them tough. They'll keep them honest. They will. They will. Uh, but in the end, the Bengals will win. Uh, they should have won last week against the um, the Green Bay Packers. They they're just have field goals. If they would have hit those field goals, they would have won. It's, uh, it's as simple as that. Simple as that. Bengals should have won. I even called them last week. They should have won. So uh, this next game is the Green Bay Packers 4-1 and one against the Bears. Now, I had Green Bay losing last week, but they won barely by last second field goal in overtime. And um, I just, I'm not a big believer, uh, and I'm not that much of a believer in the Bears either, but the Bears defense came through last week. How about that Bears defense? Wow, they looked, uh, they looked really good, didn't they? I mean, whew. Man, um, offensively, 22nd is the Green Bay Packers. That's why I'm saying I, 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 I don't, I'm not bought on them yet. They're 22nd in the league in offense, guys. And, well, I mean, the Bears are 32nd. They're last, last. Amazing, amazing. I just, I just can't believe it. And, you know, um, 
the defense, on the other hand, with the uh, the Green Bay Packers, are sixth. So they got a good defense, and now the Bears are ranked eighth. So they're both defenses are really good. So uh, the passing, uh, of course, seventeenth. The passing with the Chicago Bears is ranked thirty two. They're last in passing. Now, I mean, Justin Fields. I know he's a rookie. Mm, last in passing, Justin. Um, sorry, buddy, but you know. You were last in passing, you know. And, you know, there's other rookies doing better than you, my friend. Uh, you got to step it up, stop the running, just do more passing, and maybe you'll get a little bit better. Uh, the rushing, on the other hand, you 21st to ninth with uh, the uh, Bears, but Montgomery's out, man. And then Damian Williams is out for COVID, so Damian Williams will not be starting. He has COVID. And, um, you know, who who's going to rush for these? Who's going to run for the... I, I don't see anyone stepping up. I'm giving this one to the Packers in, in uh, Chicago, in the Windy City, uh, at Soldier Field. The Green Bay Packers going to beat the Chicago Bears. And uh, it's a good battle, good battle. Um, actually, this battle is the second winningest teams in the NFL history. These these two teams, the second winniest teams in the NFL history. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, the next game, we're talking the Chargers. I mean, four and one. The Ravens, four and one. Uh, you just, I just, I man, they can't. How can you say anything about the Chargers? Now, the Chargers. I saw Baltimore. Uh, I think it was back in 2015. Play the Chargers. And in Baltimore, I was visiting my nephew and his uh, my niece, and um, had so much fun time. But man, that that M and T uh, Bank Stadium is an amazing stadium, gorgeous stadium. Love love the the uh, the, you know, the clams and uh, man, boy, it's so much fun. To, yeah, I mean that that stadium rocks. That definitely rocks that stadium. Uh, Man, uh, the Ravens. How about man? How about Lamar Jackson? I mean, enough. I don't want to hear people say, "Well, Malar, Mal- Lamar Jackson doesn't have a good game." And then they say, "Well, maybe he isn't. He's not going to last long." Blah 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 blah. I'm sorry, people. I mean, you, you look at last week. He had, he had over 500 yards in offense. Lamar Jackson over 500 yards, guys. Uh, the guy is just, he's like watching, you know, uh, a, a great video game like Madden football. They even said, one guy said to, um, they were interviewing Lamar Jackson uh, from ESPN. And, and the announcer says to him, he goes, well, Lamar, I mean, I can't even make those moves in Madden. And then Lamar comes back and he says, I can. <laughs> uh uh, that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Um, anyway, uh, this is a tough game. A tough game. Hubert he- is eight and one in his last nine games. I mean, that's, whew. You know, and the Chargers are so good. I mean, their defense. Uh, they're holding some great teams to very low points. The Ravens, um, it, they're going to be at home with Lamar Jackson. Uh, I remember the Chargers, how they played Lamar Jackson in the playoff game that one year, and they s- just stuffed him, man. They just stuffed him because of their defense. Uh, and um, now it's different nowadays. I think that uh, Lamar Jackson and, um, is much better quarterback back then. I think he is. I think he has really done well his passing last week was just out of this world I mean out of this world and same with Justin Huber you know J.H. is he's all that and then some man this is going to be an exciting game to watch Um, this is going to be a last second field goal and the Ravens are going to pull it out over the Chargers Uh, Justin Tucker is going to kick this unbelievable 59 yard field goal and win the game by one or two points over the um, over the Chargers uh, and uh, the Ravens will beat them, but only like I said by one and two points. Justin, I, I, Mr. Tucker, uh, Mr. Sixty-six Yard Tucker, 
is going to have a 59-yard field goal in this game, and it's going to win the game. Mark my word. Uh, the Ravens over the Chargers. The next game, I mean, next game is a tough one. I mean, it's the Vikings. The Vikings, 2-3 and three Vikings, and uh, the 3-2 and two, uh, Panthers. Now, the coach said a really interesting thing of the Vikings. He says, you know what, uh, we can't have mistakes. Um, this team cannot afford mistakes. The team is a good team, excellent team, don't get me wrong. But I, I think what he means by that is that the team's not like a Baltimore. It's not like a Kansas City it's not like a Arizona or a Los Angeles Rams or even let's just go as far as the, uh, the Los Angeles Chargers or you know even as um, far as the Dallas Cowboys, right? You got to put Dallas in there because Dallas is playing all world lately. Uh, so um, I just it's going to be in uh, Carolina. Um, Carolina allowed a um, hundred and eighty four yard point five yard passing. Uh, per game this season, you know, um, that's the lowest, the fewest in the NFL. 184 yards they have allowed, um, you know, yards per game, and they, you're talking um, the Vikings guys, the Vikings, and that defense of the Panthers is just really good. It's going to stop the Vikings, and uh, the Panthers are going to beat the Vikings in this one. Uh, the Carolina Panthers over the Minnesota Vikings, they're going to be in them home, and they'll end up 4-2 uh, and two at the end of this game. The next game's a, an interesting game. You have the Cardinals, who, uh, you know, was almost beat last week. I mean, they, they had their moments, and uh, the Cardinals beat um, one last week, and um, I thought they, they played a great game. I mean, they're awesome. And uh, this matchup is former teammates' uh, um, number one overall picks with um, Kyler Murray and uh, Mr. Mayfield, you know. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's going to be an interesting game, interesting game. Uh, Baker Mayfield's going to be at home. They really need this game. They can't go 3-3. Three and three. Uh, The Cardinals are 5-0, and oh, and uh, Cardinals are favored in this game. Uh, this is my upset special of the week. The Cleveland Browns will beat the Arizona Cardinals in Cleveland. And that is my upset special of the week. Um, the next game, oh man, this is uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Um, the humiliation of John Gruden. That's, uh, that John Gruden, um, I, you know, of course I have to mention it. I mean, we have to, I have to say my piece about it. Where I mean, I believe there was an investigation with the Washington football team who led to emails they had found, and they, it was from John Gruden. And I mean, the guy put things in writing. I mean, I now mind you, I I think it's terrible, uh, you know, what he the things he said, and to be a racist like he is, uh, he is a racist. Period. I mean, no matter what. Um, Derek Carr, I mean, I love Derek Carr. Uh, he's a great guy, great kid. I mean, no matter what he says, uh, Derek, he, Mr. John Gruden is a racist, period. He's one of those good old boy racists, you know. And um, and that's who he is, and he, he will always be that way. Uh, and the way, the, the stuff that he said in these emails is just, it's just sickening. Sickening. I mean, any sport should I mean a, a coach that speaks like that and just puts it in writing? I mean, how stupid are you? Think about it. You're making ten million a year for ten years, a hundred million, and you're writing this stuff. I mean, I know you did it beforehand, but I'm sure he was doing it. You know, in the last three years. I mean, you, you, you spades a spade, man. Doesn't change its colors, you know. It just doesn't, and uh, he's not going to change his colors, or what's he going to go to therapy or something? Like? He's just going to take his money and just hide away from the public. Uh, I don't. No one's going to hire that man. No one should hire him. He's going to be banished from. Uh, you know, he already um, Tampa Bay took his name off of uh, the, their wall. 
Uh, they should, everyone should. I mean, the guy um, should be banned from anything and every everything about football. Um, he's he's everything that football is not. You know, we don't welcome racists in the NFL. The NFL Network does not welcome racists. Bravo to the NFL. Bravo, bravo, bravo. I mean, you've handed uh, hats off to the NFL um, where they handled COVID very well with all the players about, you know, vaccinations. And if you get vaccinated and you're not vaccinated and you get COVID, then it's up to you. You could lose it for the whole team. I love that. I love that. That um, I applaud, applaud the NFL on that one. Yeah, I, I definitely thank you. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, this is an interesting game. Enough about John Gruden. Um, he's, he's, he's not worth talking about. He's just not worth it. He, he's one of those people, who cares? He, he's a racist. So, you know, go go to wherever you got to go to your, your good old boy reading or whatever it is, you know. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, people make mistakes in life, but uh, this is this has been going on a long time with this man, a long time, and um, yeah, he's he deserves to be banished. That's for sure. Now, take your millions and you know go elsewhere. Why don't you do that? You know, go to Germany or wherever, um, anywhere, but the United States, right? Um, now. We have the Raiders going into Denver Mile High Stadium. I mean, this is going to be a tough game for the Raiders. Uh, Denver's a good team. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders have won four out of five games versus Denver. I mean, that's something. Um, so they can beat Denver. And they have a good team. They, the Raiders do have a good team. I I really hope they fire back and, and prove to everyone that uh, met Gruden didn't diminish their will to win. Um, but it's going to be tough, man. I mean, Derek Carr was talking about it today, how many – he's been through a plethora of coaches, you know. And, and um, it's just uh, – it's sad, man. And just to have to go through one head coach after another. Each head coach has a different plan, a different this, a different that. I mean, poor Derek Carr. You know, how to get into this uh, situation with the Las Vegas Raiders or the Raiders in general, right? Um, this is going to be an interesting game. Uh, we have the Las Vegas Raiders uh, and who are, are pretty good guys uh, against the Denver Broncos who are our adequate team. Uh, they're, they're pretty good as well. Uh, we, um, the defense, uh, let's go to offense. Offense on the Raiders, 13th. Offense on the Broncos, 18th. There you go. Now, here's the defense. Defense of Raiders, top 10. They're 10th. But the defense of the Broncos is third. Okay? Now, here's where the Raiders are pretty good. The Raiders are fourth in passing. Now, the defense of the Broncos are third, so that kind of cancels it out. But the passing of the Broncos are only 22nd. But the rushing... The rushing is where it's at with the Broncos. They have um, they have a couple horses that are just really really good, and um, you know Melvin Gordon and you know I mean Bridgewater and uh, they have some really good horses uh, to uh, put up some great numbers. Uh, they you know, have Williams, they have uh, Sutton, they have uh, Patrick. Uh, they have a good team. They have a really good team. Uh, I just don't see the Raiders um, winning this game. Uh, I just don't see it happening. I'm giving this one to the Denver Broncos at home. Uh, I think Raiders will keep them tough. I'll keep it. It's going to be a low-scoring game, guys. It's going to be a very, very low-scoring game. I think the Broncos by like two, three points. It's going to be like 15 to 12 or some very low-scoring game. The next game is an interesting game. The interesting game is, is that the Dallas Cowboys, who are just playing out of their minds, are playing the New England Patriots. Patriots 2-3. and three. Ugh. And um, you didn't think, hey, man, they're, they're loading up on those free agents. And where have they been? I mean, really... Hunter Henry's, I think he scored a one or two touchdowns, right? 
And, um, you know, the other tight end from Nashville, I, you know, he hasn't scored anything. So, I mean, I just don't, I don't see what's going on with this team. Uh, I just, I don't, I just don't see it happening. I don't know why. Um, this, this should have been a much better team, you know, um, when they, you know, they bought some talent. And uh, I just, you know, wow. I mean, having a rookie quarterback against Dak Prescott and the Cowboys, uh, this is going to be a very, very interesting game. Very, very interesting game. And um, this is uh, the number two offense against the number 26th offense. Uh, Now, here's where the boys, I mean, I know they've had some you know, issues with interceptions. They've been, you know, turning the ball over for their team. But on the other hand, uh, you have uh, the defense on the Patriots are fifth. They're top five. And the passing on the other hand is 11th for Dak Prescott and number 20th for Matt Jones. But it's the rushing, the, the two-headed monster Pollard and Zeke, they're second in the NFL, and uh, you know the Patriots are only twenty seventh. They they're running back by committee, you know. By I, who who's going to run the ball today? You know, I mean that that's unfortunate um, that New England's like that. I mean, they sh- really should have a, a couple two big horses like um, Dallas. This is going to be my lock game of the week. Yes, my lock game of the week is the Dallas Cowboys beating. The uh, New England Patriots at home. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys will beat the New England Patriots. This is my lock game of the week. My lock game. The Dallas Cowboys over the New England Patriots in New England. Um, uh, even though New England has won six straight games versus Dallas. But that was with Tom Brady. Come on now. <laughs> little little different now, aren't we? Different hemisphere. Anyway, uh, we have the Sunday night game. We have the Seattle Seahawks playing the Pittsburgh Steelers in Steel Town. Oh, my gosh. Um, Nikki's Niners, by the way. Nikki's Niners, they're off this week. They have a bye this week. They're getting healthy. The San Francisco 49ers are getting healthy this week. Uh, Nikki's Niners, um, Cute Nikki. She always waits until oh when when when's the 49ers? When is he gonna talk about the 49ers? Well, I can't talk about the 49ers because they're not playing. But I can also say, hey, they've been playing really well. I, I had them upsetting the Arizona Cardinals last week. They they played really well. They played really well. Hats off to uh the you know, they they played the Cardinals exceptionally well. Exceptionally well. I was very impressed. So this Sunday night game, we have the Seattle Seahawks going into Steel Town, playing the Steelers. Oh man, I mean the, the Seahawks two and three. They're both two and three. Um, I'm 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 looking at a, a number nineteenth offense against the number twenty seventh offense of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. The defense is where it's at. I mean the um, the Seahawks is thirty second defense in the NFL. Thirty second. That's amazing, 32nd. Come on now, really? The Steelers are 16th. <sighs> and then we have passing. We have um, the Seattle Seahawks, number 16. And uh, the passing of uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mr. Roethlisberger, number 19. Now, mind you, guess who went down? Yeah. I mean, they have Geno Smith, who is not, who's being, it's going to be playing in, um, you know, uh, they lost their number one quarterback last week, Mr. Russell Wilson, uh, to a bad that that he hit. Um, I think it was Bose's hand, and his finger looked like it was like uh, it's. It looked terrible. It looked you know dislocated. Um, and uh, I guess it's um, it's going to be like a three to four week thing. Uh, it's his passing hand. So I just, I, you know, who knows when he's going to come back. Five weeks. This is going to be tough for the CL Seahawks. I mean, they're going in and playing a, you know, Pittsburgh's team that's not on all cylinders. 
but that defense of the um, the Seahawks is is terrible, and the rushing of uh, Seattle's near last. They're thirty first, and rushing for the Seahawks is nineteenth. Uh, the passing sixteen to nineteen, nineteen. Like I said, uh, with the Steelers, so, um, man, I, this is such a hard game. I, I I'm seeing Russell Wilson's not going to be there. It's going to be hard to beat the Steelers in. Steel Town on a Thursday night, I mean a Sunday night football game. Um, boy, I, you know, Seattle has allowed 450 yards in four straight games. Wow. The longest streak in, t- in team history. Over 450 total yards in four straight games. Each game, 450 yards plus. This defense is just... It's not good. It's not good. I think the Steelers are going to prevail in this one because uh, Russell Wilson's not around. Geno Smith is good. He's not a Russell Wilson. He'll keep it close. But the Steelers in this one over the Seattle Seahawks. And then the next game is going to be a Monday night football. The Buffalo Bills, 4-1, and one, going against the Tennessee Titans. Buffalo's won four straight games by 18-plus points. The tied second longest streak in, Super, in the Super Bowl era. Can you believe that? Four straight games by more than 18-plus points. They've won by, mind you. It's the second, tied for second longest streak in Super in this whole Super Bowl era. Wow, that's pretty big, and they are all that and then some. Um, I don't think uh, you know you're going to think, oh, the Buffalo Bills will come down to earth, yada yada. And how are they going to stop the Titans' um, rushing game, which is uh, you know it's all world. Derrick Henry. I mean, how can you stop him? But, you know, the Buffalo Bills are number 8th offense in the NFL against the number 10 offense of the um, the Tennessee Titans. But guess what, Tennessee? You're facing the number 1 defense in the NFL. Yes, the Buffalo Bills are the number 1 defense in the NFL. And this is the, the next um, stat I'm giving you is about the Titans. They're 21st. And this is the reason why the Titans aren't going to make it into the playoffs this week, this month, this year, excuse me. Um, I, they might make it. I don't see them making it. I just don't see them making it. They're 21st to defense in the NFL, but they're passing. They're 26th. So, I mean, what, what happened? They got Julio Jones, right? They all got, oh, I got Julio Jones. We're going to be number one, blah, blah, blah. But Julio, Julio, there's a reason why Atlanta got rid of Julio. He's past his prime, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, um, I was stupid enough to pick him up in fantasy football. How about how stupid was that? Julio Jones. I thought he would have a breakout year, but I think he's past his prime. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, so the defense, number one, number 21st for the Titans. The passing uh, for the Bills is number nine, I guess number 26th for the, uh, you know, the Tennessee Titans. Um, I was going to say Nashville, you know, but anyway, same thing, right? Tennessee. Um, then we have, um, the rushing attack. This is another good. The rushing on Tennessee Titans are third, right? And the Buffalo Bills are five guys, number five. They're, I, they're I, like I said before the season started. I, I'm, I called Buffalo Bills and the Tampa Bay Bucks to be in the Super Bowl this year, and I mean it, it's it's looking like that, isn't it, people? I mean, think about it. How Tampa Bay's winning? They've had one hiccup. And then how, um, you know, the Buffalo Bills had one hiccup right in the beginning of the season. And, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a great game right here. I'm, I, Monday Night Football, they've been all great. I just, I just don't see um, the Titans, you know, getting past the Buffalo Bills. I think the Bills are a much better team. The Tennessee Titans will lose Monday Night Football, so um, Buffalo Bills will be five and one at the end of this game. Hooray for the Buffalo Bills! 
And um, let's just go over my picks quickly, very quickly. Uh, we have the Bucks over the Eagles uh, in tonight's game. We have the Jags that win their first game of the season in uh, um, Totenherd, to- Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London. The Jacksonville Jags uh, on Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, if you want to watch that game. West Coast, 6 a.m., East Coast, 9 a.m. Uh, and uh, that will be a fun game to watch. I think um, it will be Trevor Lawrence's first win and um, uh, Urban Meyer's first win uh, of his NFL, uh, you know, coaching extravaganza. Anyway, um, I have no idea what that meant. doesn't matter. Uh, so we have the Chiefs over the football, uh, Washington football team. We have the Rams beating the Giants. We have the Colts over the Texans. We have the Bengals over the Lions. We have the Packers over the Bears. And we have the Ravens over the Chargers. We have the Panthers over the Vikings. And we have the Browns over the Cardinals. And we have uh, the Broncos to beat the Raiders. And we have the uh, the Cowboys. My lock pick of the day is the Dallas Cowboys to beat the uh, New England Patriots. Uh, and then we have uh, the Steelers uh, winning out at home on Sunday Night Football. Uh, I Justine will love that, won't she? Her and her sisters, and um, they—they're all from you know that Pittsburgh area, you know, uh, and one of the best, uh, you know, uh, YouTubers in the the world is I Justine. If you want to look her up on YouTube, I Justine. She has millions and millions of followers. Um, hats off to her and her sister, Jenna. Uh, and um, on Monday night, once again, Buffalo Bills. Thank you so much, people. Uh, Thursday Night Football with Calvin Dean, sponsored by the NFL Network. See you next week, everyone.